Hello and welcome to the sixth episode in the Grade 9 Physics series of the Knowledge Catalog. For this series, we are going to have two um, learning competencies as uh, made up this year in this uh, part of the slide. So, the first uh, learning competency is describe the horizontal and vertical motions of a project that you think. This is, uh, this is familiar to you because this has been the competent learning competency that we have been working on uh, in Grade 9 Physics. And then we will be moving to the next learning competency which is relate impulse and momentum to collision of objects such as vehicular collisions. You need to, to have a copy of the 70 based self-learning module in Science 9 which I have developed and then you have to open the you have to open it in Unit 4, books 18 and 19, pages 21 to 25, and page 1 respectively. And, and the, the parts of this session are the following. The first is um, communicate, which is the last section in the 7 e based self learning module. Now we will be having an evaluation, which is comprised of multiple choices. And then uh, for the second part, we will be having a reading of the summary of the entire module of I mean, the entire book, book 18, uh, which is in, which is about motion in three dimensions. So this is a part na yan. Uh, generalization uh, summary statements okay, ng book number 18 and then for the uh, last part of this session we have an overview about the next uh, book which is book 19 a uh, learning competency and learning objectives yung mga discuss natin siya so i hope that you're ready okay, so in the previous session we ended up having uh, the uh, evaluation under the communicate section where you uh, did i think a uh, concept map do you remember that? Okay, but this time we will be having an evaluation using uh, multiple choice items. Okay, for question number one, as a type of motion, projectile has a distinction. Which among the following involves projectile motion? A. A motion motion of a soccer ball that is kicked by a player. B. Motion of a ball tossed into the air at an angle. C. Motion of a basketball thrown to another member of the team. Or is D. All of the above. Remember that for this section, since we are you have to answer this on a sheet of paper or on your science notebook and you have to indicate the, uh, the, the title, which is uh, Communicate Evaluation Multiple Choices. So that must um, organize yung mga, yung mga notes. Mo. Yeah. So you are given, uh, you were given time to answer this question. Whenever you're ready, just uh, play, uh, just uh, hit the play button. Okay? Okay, if you're ready to, next, to move to the next um, item, let us move to question number two. Which of the following applies projectile at, applies projectile at its highest point? Or applies the projectile at its highest point? Okay, so A, vertical velocity is zero. B. Horizontal velocity is zero. C. Vertical and horizontal velocities are equal. And then D. Horizontal velocity is greater than vertical velocity. Okay, question number three. In one of his games, JC threw a football at an angle of 30 degrees with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second. How long will the ball stay in air? A. 10.20 seconds B. 20.10 seconds Is it C. 11.20 seconds Or D. 12.10 seconds Question number 4 Thrilled by the fact that she was bought a basketball ball, Christina threw it in the air with an initial velocity or V.I. How will you describe the speed of the basketball at the top of flight? So at its highest point. Okay, so is it A? Is it VI? Is it equal to, is it equal to the initial velocity? Is it B? Did it double? Is it C? Did it, was it uh, halved? Or was it uh, reduced to half of the original initial velocity? Or is it D? Was it equal to zero? Remember that we are asking about the velocity, the speed of the uh, basketball um, at its highest speed. Dun sa, high, dun sa maximum height na reach niya. Question number five. She was so excited to climb up the lighthouse. Marjorie, upon reaching the top, 
found the safe spot and dropped a stone. That's actually very, you know, eh? that's dangerous. Baka merong tao sa ilalim ng, ng lighthouse. <laughs> okay, so the, but the stone reached the ground in two seconds. Neglecting air pressure and resistance, what is the height of the lighthouse spot where she dropped the stone? Is it 78.4 meters? Is it 20 meters? Is it 40 meters? Or is it 160 meters? Okay, let's now proceed to answering these questions. For the first uh, question, the answer is D, all of the above. For question number two, the answer is A, vertical velocity is zero. For question number three, the answer is 10.20 seconds. For question number four, the answer is zero. So yung kanyang speed or velocity at the top of the flight is equal to zero. Okay? Question number five, the answer is 20 meters. Okay, so uh, that was it. Make sure that you indicate your score on the upper right hand corner of your sheet of paper or of your of that page you used from your science notebook. Let us now move on to the next part, which is the reading of the summary statements for book 18. So um, the topic was motion in two dimensions. We talked about project and motion uh, for most of the beginning of the of physics 9 series. So uh, our first summary statement is that Project in motion has two independent components, its horizontal and uh, vertical uh, components. The horizontal motion of a projectile is with respect to the x-axis, whereas its vertical motion or vertical component is with respect with the y-axis to the y-axis and it is influenced by gravity. And the next uh, summary statement is that there are two types of project in motion projectile that is thrown at an angle with respect to the horizontal and there are also projectiles that are thrown horizontally. Okay, so those two are our summary statements for motion in two dimensions. Let's now move on to the last part of this uh, session. The last part of this session is where we are going to have an overview of the uh, next book which is book number 19. Hi, so we will be discussing first in this uh, part of the session uh, what are the learning competencies and the learning objectives that you need to keep in mind or you need to master in book number 19. Uh, so as you can see uh, in this illustration, there are two different types of balls uh, mass that, has, that have different types of masses and different uh, velocities. And as you can see, uh, this basketball ball is moving towards this soccer ball which is at rest. And then the time uh, that it took for them to collide is only one second. So yeah, most of, uh, actually the entirety of book number 19 is about impulse and momentum. It is entitled Introduction to Impulse and Momentum. We are actually treating this uh, book number 19 as an introductory book because we will be furthering our talks on colliding objects in the next uh, books, in the succeeding books. Uh, in the previous book, uh, what we have investigated are objects that were either launched, thrown, dropped, or projected at a particular angle. Right? We, we studied about projectile, and the projectile motion taught us that even though we can only see one object moving along a long trajectory, there are actually different uh, factors. Mostly, there are different forces that are acting upon that object. Uh, so by studying them, uh, by knowing more about project in motion, we we know now that a seeming that uh, a seemingly simple throwing of, of a ball okay, by a player to a basketball ring is actually a very complicated thing. Uh, that is the same uh, for uh, no, for momentum. That's the same for momentum. You see, these two balls they, they seem to have like you know a simple mechanism of colliding. Yeah. We know that, and we also were also familiar with the term momentum. Okay, uh, the momentum of this you know, of this ball, and the, the momentum of this uh, uh, it resulted to a momentum on this ball. Well, um, the term momentum is very familiar familiar to us. Um, say, for instance, when a player 
one our one our favorite uh, no favorite basketball team has this really strong player and when that player is uh, really performing really well or the entire team is performing really well uh, we can say that the team is uh, the team's momentum is very high so what does that mean when a team's momentum or when a player's momentum is high it means that it is so difficult to stop these players from winning, to stop these players from shooting that ball, from getting that score. It is so difficult for them uh, to be to, to stop them. Okay, so um, when, when a player or a, a team okay, is uh, just like that, has a very high momentum, um, you know, they are technically, literally, unstoppable. Okay, so, um, we are not actually talking going to talk about teams that are colliding to each other. We're going to talk about actual objects colliding to each other, having momentums. Okay, so um rest yourselves. <laughs> We're not going to talk about crashing bones or whatever. Okay, so the learning competency uh, the learning objectives of this uh, book, book number 19, are the following. So first you should be able to explain the different factors affecting momentum. Uh, mass and velocity should be able to, to explain them, to describe them, how do they affect momentum. You should also be able to uh, describe how impulse, which is a twin term of momentum, affects momentum. Okay, uh, they're like, yeah, twins. And then uh, solve problems with impulse and momentum, and that you should be able as well to appreciate the concept of impulse and momentum in minimizing the destructive impacts and uh, of collisions. Okay, so we will be um, talking about um, cars that may uh, lose control. So I hope that uh, I am I'm warning you now. Okay, instead, I mean, in case that that is a trigger trigger warning for it. But don't worry, we're not going to be very graphic about it. Like no blood, no 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 nothing. Okay. Uh, we're just going to talk about the scientific, uh, the scientific aspects of of accidents, so that we will be able to discuss uh, the importance of road safety. Yeah. So that is the end of the last part of this session: overview on the learning competency and the learning objectives. So I hope that uh, you were able to take note of your uh, of your work. You were able to keep them. Remember the summary statements on uh, motion into dimensions that they were from the uh, book 18. And then you were also able, uh, we were also able to clarify what were our expectations? What are our expectations for book number 19? Yeah, so this is Sir CJ and I hope that I will be seeing you again in the next uh, video in this series, uh, Grade 9 Physics of the Knowledge Catalog. Have a good day.